Hello everyone, I'm Jenny from TuftingLove.com and today we're going to have a closer look at our product of the month, the rock carving machine. Before we start, don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out on any tufting news on tutorials. And also, if you want to have special access to special deals, subscribe for our newsletter on tuftinglove.com. So let's have a look at this magical machine. Our rock carving machine can lift your artworks really to the next level. You can simply even out surfaces of your tufted artworks or can actually carve three-dimensional areas into it. And I just really like what this small thing can do to your artworks. Let's have a look at different ways of using that machine. So let's have a look at this rock. It was one of the first rocks I carved. And to be honest, I carved longer than I tufted. I spent more time with this machine and this rock than I did with the tufting machine and this rock. So I started with just evening out all the surfaces. I have to say, I tufted all this on the same, same pile height. So it has not been three dimensional at all. It has just been one flat, fluffy thing in the beginning. And then I really started to just carve out some parts much more than others. But also, as you can see, these are the same. And the only thing I did here is to really create this V-shaped cave. So I just went in like this from both sides to actually create this V-shaped cave and define the lines much clearer. As you can see, the machine is wired and has this on and off switch here and also a speed regulator where you can change the speed on how fast the shears will move. We are usually tufting wool and we figured out the maximum speed works best for us most of the time. But this can vary on different yarns you use, the way you tuft. You will find this out in the process. So let's talk about different ways to use the rock carving machine. You can either use it still while tufting. So let's say you already tufted a blob on your tufting cloth and you want to carve it out, you can easily carve it while you're not finished tufting. These side bars here will protect you from cutting the tufting cloth and create a hole. We never had a problem with this. As long as you don't go in just really like frontal into the tufting cloth, there is no problem of damaging it. And of course, you can then use it after tufting. You can just use it to simply even out areas. So you don't, you want to have an even surface because as we know, while tufting, it's not getting completely even. So you can just simply use it to even it out or make different levels of the tufted surfaces. This was the same pile height all when we tufted it and simply sheared down this orange part. Of course, you can also use the shearing machine to define lines as we did here. These are the same pile height and we just used it to basically create a V-shaped grove. Like this was the lavender one and this the magenta. And we simply cut in like this and like this. So we created this V-shaped cave and we're able to define the lines clearer like that. As you might imagine, carving yarn, wool, acrylic yarn, whatever, is creating a big mess. So we always have our um, handheld um, vacuum cleaner with us. And as well, it's not only for us a thing, it's also for the machine a thing. So let's have a look at the maintenance. So we have two machines here. This one is freshly cleaned and this one we just use for carving. So let's have a look at the parts you should really think about. So first of all, if you're tufting a big amount, like a large rock, you might want to give it a break from time to time because it's a lot for them to take in as well. Second of all, you 
can change the blades here. And this is also the part where all the fluffs get stuck in the machine. So I show you, this is the cleaned machine. And this one is the one we used for carving today. And look at all the fibers in here. Like really this stuff, you wanna make it go. We usually do use uh, our air compressor, but we're aware not everyone has an air compressor in their studio. You can also just use a simple brush to clean it out. Just don't forget about it because the fluffs really do pile up in here and create, it creates a lot of friction if you leave them in. You really want to make sure your machine is always cleaned. So I would say after every rock you carve, clean it. And if it's a very big rock, also have a look at it in between. It really is no big deal. You don't need any tools to undo it. It's really just push it up from here and simply put it on from the top and push it down again. And this is already enough cleaned for while you tuft. And in the end, when you're finished with the rock, I really recommend you really clean it properly. As it is with everything that is cutting something, the blades might get dull over time. With the machine comes a spare set of this whole part, so you can just exchange it. And this part can be resharpened by your local professional sharpener. Do you say that in English like that? Of course, at one point, there is nothing left to resharpen. We do sell all the spare parts in our shop. Just have a look at tuftinglove.com. You will find it there. So now you might think, why should you buy this thing? Well, you have this hair clipper that you bought in the first lockdown because you had to give your roommates COVID haircuts. And of course, you can do it with a, uh, with a, with a normal hair clipper, but it's not made for this amount and density of threads. I mean, the human hair, even if you have thick hair, I have pretty thick hair. Yeah, I have maybe medium thick hair. But even if you have a very thick hair, it's not comparable to a strand of wool or cut, cotton or whatever. The hair clippers for humans are for humans. And this hair clipper is made to take the load of wool. And therefore, of course, you can do it with your COVID hair clipper that you have at home. At one point you will realize it's not, it's getting very tired pretty quick. Also my hair clippers at home, they do not have a cable, they have a battery. And to be honest, I don't think that it would last very long when carving a rock because sometimes it's even not lasting for me and Bjorn to cut our hair. So that's also something why we chose the cabled version over the battery version because you want to be able to just carve and not need to take a break because the battery is running low. But of course, you can try it out with your hair clipper that you have at home. Once you will get it, you will have this moment of, oh my God, it's so much faster because that's what we get from our customers as well. It's like, it's just made to take a heavier load of threads and not simply just human hair. For us, and based on your feedback also for you, this is one of your most favorite products that we have in the shop. And yes, it makes your life much easier and your hands will hurt less if you don't have to do it with your scissors anymore. And you can do it, can do it with a rock carving machine. Your tufted artworks will simply be brought to a new level with this little tiny rock carving machine. So I think you know everything about our product of the month, the rock carving machine now. If you have any more questions and you want to know more or see more of it, leave a comment below and I'm happy to answer all your questions. If you liked the video, don't forget to hit the like button and I'll see you next time for the next product of the month. Bye!